elaborate barriers to discourage you from going off the trail. These things also serve as like condominiums for ground voles and whatnot, providing lots of cover. to the density of habitat. Oh, look, we're coming out on the marsh. Oh, I see. Yeah, we're a little bit closer to that strange shack. That's probably someone's private property. See, it's right over there. Or something. But here's an even closer shot of the roadies and whatnot over by Rocker. So yeah, the pieces are coming together. <laughs> the place is starting to get recognizable. We should be coming to the trail junction some reasonable amount of time. The Esker's up that way. This is the low road. We done took the high road. See, we, we sort of passed by this, this is the funny little junction, but we haven't really seen any crossable junction that way. No, this is, here's a, here's a way to get up on the Esker if you want. We was up there. There's the Vernal Pond. 
bother. Uh-oh, got an obstacle. Yeesh, looks like it's been here a while. Have to figure out the game plan. <laughs> to our chagrin, the trail doesn't go anywhere here after that fallen pine chunk that's something to clamber over. And if you look closely, Mass Audubon does let you know by the way that they designate the arrow. It's not a two-directional arrow. This is a key piece of information that you'll do well to observe. So this means we just get back up on the Asker, I guess. Uh, that piece of Milebrook is toast and they haven't updated the map lately. But at least you get a nice easy switch back for getting up the thing, which is something to appreciate. <laughs> Closing the loop, back at the North Esker section. <clears throat> this is 